my name is Iman Malidi and I am a co-founder and the commercial director of Augment Bionics. Um, Augment Bionics is a student-led project that aims to produce 3D printed prosthetic limbs ordinarily um, and our core mission is that we aim to produce these at as low price point as possible so that they're affordable um, whilst also maintaining a smart sort of functionality so that people can get on with their day-to-day -day lives. So I think what's important to remember is that we are students and a lot of the um, team um, who may even be recent graduates as well have suddenly found themselves um, at home at an incredibly stressful and anxious time. When you leave um, engineers and sort of recent graduates uh, bored for a while they, they tend to get pretty creative um, so that's what we found happened. So within a matter of days we decided this is something we really care about and we were all collectively seeing in the news that there was a, a distinct lack um, of personal protective equipment available to uh, medical professionals and because we work closely with medical professionals ordinarily um, we were contacted by a few people within our network to ask to see if we could help plug the gap um, and so within a couple of days we decided to suspend our ordinary um, operations and, and turn our attention to the coronavirus and, and help to do our bit in any way that we could. Hello, my name is Nathan. I'm an NHS junior doctor working in critical care and emergency medicine. I wanted to put this video together to say an enormous thank you to Augment Bionics. They have incredibly, in a matter of days, produced these 3D printed visors. It's a simple plastic headband and a protective sheet of plastic that fits together in a matter of seconds to protect the wearer from the spread of respiratory droplets. Since the time just a couple of weeks ago when I first got in touch with Augment Bionics, they have incredibly kindly donated 150 of these visors, which have already been distributed to frontline workers in a &E departments and in community mental health care trusts. So we started with um, some open source designs that we then adapted and we've worked collaboratively with a number of other projects that are also 3D printing um, prosthetic face shields. Um, and uh, as I said, within a number of days, we were able to find a workspace at, at the Latimer Upper School, which um, our technical director is an alum of, so he got to go back to his old secondary school. And they were kind enough to let us use their workshop, um, which had 3D printers available, um, and to set up base camp there. So far, we have produced um, hundreds uh, across um, Britain. Um, and we've supplied everywhere from Liverpool to Inverness um, to uh, many centres in London. Um, and now we're tweaking our design even further uh, and hoping to get that to distribute over 5,000 units a month. So we're amping up our capacity as much as we can, as quickly as we can to help fulfil the need. And so we've received um, an overwhelming number of emails from uh, from GPs and other professionals who, who are really thankful and, and for us it's really really, really touching because we get regret, we get requests that are sometimes emotional and sometimes really desperate and it's it's very difficult not to be not to be affected by that, um, especially when you're also following the news and when you're uh, many of us are worried also about our loved ones and, and have care responsibilities. Um, so to give back in, in any way and feel like that um, effort is being received and is being and is being used um, goes some way to to, to helping us feel like we're, we're helping within our own community and it's something we really want to be able to continue. And originally when we started out we um, wanted to raise £2,000 so that we could distribute um, over 1,000 uh, face shields and in our own way um, by us completely smashing that target it means that we can produce more and more but I think what comes hand in hand with that is uh, an acknowledgement just of, of how much um, 
how many face shields are required, how much there is of a deficit in personal protective equipment and we are willing to carry on for, for as long as we can and we draw absolutely no salary for ourselves but you know most of us are students and also working towards our um, our final exams and assessments and and we feel a duty towards this but we 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 want to do this out of love for the community and, and making sure that those people who need protect protection are protected now i think what we're seeing is you know ordinary people who um are setting aside their livelihoods and are setting aside their time and are willing to um to give back and and I think what what we are surprised by, even though we would fall into that group, is that how quickly um, we have been able to mobilise um, against what many other larger companies um, haven't been able to do. And you know, for many reasons, um, I think this is something that that kind of goes to show a continual democratisation of um, of healthcare. And I think is also setting a really important precedent in that if we can do this in a matter of days. Um, and you are inspired by some sort of uh, mission to do with healthcare or any other um, problem that affects society, that doing it as an individual, doing it as, as a group of people who, um, who may not be professionals in this area or may not work for a large company, uh, have the agility um, actually to do this a lot faster. We knew that we had to act now and we, and we wanted to. Um, so we've pulled together all our resources in order to be able to do that as quickly as possible. Thank you.